Two key, chapter 18. Now, in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, became king of Judah. He was 25 years old when he became king, ruling in Jerusalem for 29 years. His mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Jehariah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as David his father had done. He had the high places taken away, and the stone pillars broken to pitch, and ash hurrah cut down, and the brass snake which Moses had made was crushed to powder at his order. Because in those days the children of Israel had offerings burned before it, and he gave it the name New Shatan. He had faith in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that there was no one like him among all the kings of Judah who were before him. For his heart was fixed on the Lord, not turning from his ways, and he did his orders which the Lord gave to Moses. And the Lord was with him, he did well in all his undertakings, and he took up arms against the king of Assyria and was his servant no longer. He overcame the Palestine as far as Gaza and its limits, from the Tower of the Watchmen to the World Tower. Now in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Salman Nezer, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria, shutting it in with his armies. And at the end of three years, they took it in the sixth year of Hezekiah rule, which was the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. And the king of Assyria took Israel away as prisoners into Assyria, placing them in Hala and Habor on the river Gozan and in the towns of the Medes. Because they did not give ear to the voice of the Lord their God, but went against his agreement, even against everything ordered by Moses, the servant of the Lord, and they did not give ear to it or do it. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the world towns of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to Lachis, to the king of Assyria, saying, I have done wrong, give up attacking me, and whatever you put on me, I will undergo. And the payment he was to make was fixed by the king of Assyria at 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. So Hezekiah gave him all the silver in the house of the Lord and in the king's storehouse. And at that time Hezekiah had the gold from the doors of the Lord's house and from the door pillars plated by him, cut off and gave it to the king of Assyria. Then the king of Assyria sent the Tartan and the Rapsaris and the Rapshape from Leches to Jerusalem to King Hezekiah with a strong force. And they went up and came to Jerusalem and took up their position by the stream of the higher pool by the highway of the washerman's field. And they sent for the king and Eliakim, the son of Hezekiah, who was of the house, and Shina, the scribe, and Jua, the son of Ashab, the recorder, came out to them. And the Rabshak said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, These are the words of the great king, the king of Assyria, in what are you placing your hope? 
You say you have a design and strength for work, but these are only words now to whom are you looking for support? That you have gone against my authority? See now, you are basing your hope on that broken road of Egypt, which will go through a man's hand if he makes use of it for support. For so is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who put their faith in. And if you say to me, our hope is in the Lord, our God is not he, whose high places and altars his care has taken away, saying to Judah and Jerusalem that worship may only be given before this altar in Jerusalem. And now take a chance with my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2,000 horses if you are able to put horsemen on them. How then may you put to shame the list of my master's servants that you have put your hope in Egypt for war carriages and horsemen? And have I not come up to send destruction on this place without the Lord's authority? It was the Lord himself who said to me, Go up against this land and make it waste. Then Eliakim, the son of Shekiah, the son of Shimna and Jua, said to the Rapshek, you will kindly make use of the Aramean language in talking to your servant, for we are used to it. And do not make use of the Jews languages in the hearing of the people of the world. But the Rabshakeh said to them, Is it to your master or to you that my master has sent me to say these words? Has he not sent me to the man seated on the wall? for they are the people who will be short of food with you when the town is shut. Then the Rabshakeh got up and said with a loud voice in the Jewish language, Give ear to the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says, Do not be tricked by his kia, for there is no salvation for you in him. And do not let his kia make you put your faith in the Lord, saying, the Lord will certainly keep us safe, and this town will be, uh, be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Do not give ear to his kia, for this is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and come out to me, and everyone will be free to take the fruit of his vine and of his fig tree, and the water of his spring. Till I come and take you away to a land like yours, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and fine gardens, a land of oil giving olives and of honey, so that life and not that may be your fate. Give no attention to his kia when he says to you, the Lord will keep us safe. Has any one of the gods of the nation kept his land from falling into the hands of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamet and of Harpath? Where are the gods of Shepharvah, of Hannah and Abia? Have they kept Samaria out of my hands? Who among all the gods of these countries have kept their country from falling into my hands? To give cause for the thought that the Lord will keep Jerusalem from falling into my hands. But the people kept quiet and gave him no answer for the king's order was. Give him no answer. Then Elik Akim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the house, and the Shimna, the scribe, the Jua, the son of Ashab, the recorder. came to his kia, with their clothing parted as a sign of grief, and gave him an account of what the Rapshake had said.